Thank you for joining us, Tariq. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're back home. Um, these days you are coming to Ghana more and more. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I always love coming back and this time around just to do some, some charity work and work for my foundation for a couple of days. I mean, it's even more impressive, I think, because you literally had just a few days to spare. And, you know, when I told somebody I was going to interview Tariq, they said, He's probably, I mean, usually would be at a beach somewhere stretching his legs, but you're back home. I mean, this obviously means the charity work is important to you. Yeah, it's very important to me. Like I said, um, I think I've said a number of times, um, I'm grateful to God for the position that I'm in. But while well, I'm in this position, I want to make sure that I use it to, to help others. And to be honest, I, I really enjoy doing this. And it's not, it's not like a, for me, like I said, on the beach somewhere, no, I, I'd, rather, I'd rather be here. and be seeing the smile on the, the kids' faces, and I, I really appreciate all the work that my team has done in the background, so um, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here. Yeah, um, even in the years when you couldn't come in the beginning, you were always sending jerseys and stuff to some of these teams, and last year, you know, we had the opportunity to see you down here, and watching you playing with the kids, and it was such an absolute joy for you, smiling all over <laughs> and just hanging out like you are, you know, one of them, which, which yeah, yeah, I guess you are. Yeah, everybody's, like, I think people forget that you start at that young age, you have a dream of just playing professional football. You don't know any wildest dreams you think you can be at like, this level and God willing you can go even higher. But like I said, everyone starts with just a playing surface and a ball. And then after that... What's not to enjoy? What's not to enjoy about being a Black Star finally, yeah? I'm, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> I think I said, um, like the, the boys have been fantastic, the coaching staff, everyone involved has been really welcoming to me and like I'm really enjoying my time. We have a really good squad and we're looking forward to, uh, to working hard, listening to what the coach has to say and then improving and achieving our goals. Yeah, you joined at the time when you know Ghana was getting ready for the World Cup. You know what the talk was like? It was an incredibly um, new-ish team, but people were really excited about the additions like yourself, like um, Sally, you know, and the others who were coming in, especially from Germany and others. When you saw the new crop of players plus the experienced team together going to the World Cup, what did it feel like even before the final call up? So, are you excited about what was coming in Qatar? I think you're always excited to play for your country, no matter in the World Cup, in a friendly game. I think the, obviously the World Cup is special. You think about it when you're your little boy, but whenever you join up with the team, you're always excited and looking forward to, to getting down to work. Like I said, you know, we have a great mixture in the, in the team and we're looking forward to doing some, some good things going forward. Your first match for the, for, for, for the Black Stars at the World Cup was, was South Korea. What was it like? coming out of the dugout into the stadium and knowing you were going to play in the World Cup and represent your country? Yeah, something that you can't put into words. It was a special, special moment for me, for me and my family. It was, it was amazing. And to be honest, that was one of the first times that in the full match I've actually looked around and probably soaked up every, everything that was happening. And You're that, kidding? You like... Nah, yeah, before the game, like I was on the pitch in the warm-up and I was like, wow, like I can't believe, I can't believe I'm here. I was so grateful to God for the position that I'm in. And I was just thinking, OK, now it's time to, to go out there, do the job and, and bring it home for the team. And that's what we were able to do on the day. So, yeah, it was an amazing day. And, yeah, one that I remember. Mm. Informally, I mean, well, how is the banter like with the, with the lads? Um, what do you speak with them? You know what, what happens in the dressing room? Like, everyone's got good vibes and, like, everyone's... It's just really good group. It's a really good group and I'm, I'm grateful to them for making what it easy. What do you speak with the team? English, Ga, Chi? Uh, you know, we speak a Chi. So, but it's all different. <laughs> but you know, there's different languages in there. So, sure. Like, you, everyone's welcome. Everyone speaks for whatever they feel comfortable with. And me, I'm, I'm good for, for everything. So, it's all okay. good. Yeah, we saw your initial dancing video. Oh, no, no, you didn't see that. You didn't see that. <laughs> I think that one has been deleted from all social media. So, I, I'm not too sure where you, where you got that one from. Come on, man. I'm, I'm giving you a 9 over 10. What's your problem? 9 over 10? Oh, yes, I'm giving you a 9 over 10. I've seen the video. <laughs> I've seen the video, exactly, exactly. But, I mean, speaking about the vibe, Tariq, um, we, I followed the Black Stars for, by the grace of God, quite a long time, more than a decade, and the vibe around this team at the World Cup was truly amazing. I mean, you could, you could feel the, the bond between you guys. So, off the pitch, what was the genuine expectation before the first ball was kicked in, in Qatar? I think, like you said, you know the quality that you have in the group. You know the togetherness that you have. 
Um, we have some players that have already been there and done it, so they, we, we, lean, we lean on them to help us to get through the experience and they were fantastic for us, to be honest. Mm. And I think you have to take it game by game, because in football you can't look too far ahead. Every, every game brings different challenges, so we were concentrated on the first game that we had to do, and then after that you move on to the next and the next and the next, because you can't look too far ahead. Unfortunately, things didn't go out as planned. Um, would you say the team disappointed Ghanaians? To be honest, it's, it's a thing where we always try our best. We work as hard as possible and we go on the pitch to win. Like, um, we wasn't able to do that in this occasion, but for sure in the future we're, we're working hard. We, we believe in ourselves and we have to keep, keep going through, through the challenges because in football it's never, it's never straightforward or there's always ups and downs and you have to be able to ride it and you have to have faith in yourself and faith in the team and that's definitely something that we have, so, yeah. Look, Ghanaians have not seen a trophy in 40 years-ish. Um, how confident are you in the ability of this team to win something finally for the country? So football is a very difficult game. Mm. It's hard that you're playing against players that are top world-class players at the highest level. But we believe in ourselves. You have to. And in football, you don't go into any game thinking that you're going to lose. We always have the feeling that you're going to win. You always have the feeling that if you work hard and you prepare right, then you get the right result. So. We don't really worry about what we have to do, the external factors. If we concentrate and we do what is right for us, like I said, take each game as it comes, and we're, we're confident. We're confident. You have a new boss, Chris Hutton. Um, what was the first time you met him? Did you meet him in Cam the first time? or? Where, where, no, I think I knew Chris from, from before. Mm -hmm. I think his, his coaching career, and he's a fantastic guy, and the coaching career speaks for itself. So I think we're all really excited to, uh, to work under. Yeah, I, I just want some, you know, some anecdotes. How did you first meet him? Can you remember your first meeting with him professionally? Uh, I think there's a few times. Obviously, he was back in England and he had ties to Brighton, so yeah. Yeah, I can't remember the exact date, but yeah. OK, where the Black Stars is concerned, when you became a Black Star, how you first met him and all that, what, what was he like in terms of getting you, helping you to integrate into the side? I think, like I said, that we have a really good group. Yeah. Um, Chris is a great guy and... Um, I think you can see that on and off the pitch, it works speech for itself, but like the whole team, the, all the staff members, like I was really grateful. It was not just one person, like it was everyone that really welcomed me in. And like I said, I'm really grateful for that and they made the experience easy for me to transition. Yeah, you had to play a game under him, you know, as a black star, obviously because of the injuries and, and everything. Um, in terms of the position in the black stars that you play, how do you see the competition? How do you see yourself getting a game? Continuing to be um, consistently playing in that position. I think it's like anything in football. You have to be fit first. Um, you have to make sure that obviously my recovery is right. Um, eating well, sleeping well, and then training hard to make sure I'm, I'm back up to maximum, maximum level. I know my level. And then be training and playing well. And then we'll see what the, the coach decides. African qualifiers coming up. That's the big thing. It's in um, January next. It's going to be next year. How excited are you at playing at a continental competition in Africa? I'm very excited. Mm. I'm very excited. Obviously, there's a few steps before that. Qualifiers and league games have to play to make sure you get, you get yourself into competitive form. Mm. But like, it's, a, it's an amazing competition. And like you said, the, the ultimate goal would to be to go there and, and lift it. But yeah, like I said, the steps before that, and yeah, it will be, be amazing to, to play there, to experience it, and hopefully we can, we can do well. Any plans of how you intend to convince the technical team to put Tariq, Slam, Tariq Lamte's name on the, on, the, uh, on the team sheet for the first game when you come back? You have to do the, the speaking on the pitch. It's yeah. as simple as that. If you're training well, you're playing well, then you can only control what you can control. And then the rest is up to the coach and whoever to, to pick the team. But you have to just make sure that you're doing everything that you can control. I'm playing well for my club. And then after that, we'll see. Having played for England's youth teams, what would you say is the difference in terms of the expectation and the pressure between England of their national teams and Ghana in the national team in the short time you've been here? You know what? I get this question a lot. <laughs> but I think that in football, it doesn't matter if you're playing friendly game, cup game, it's all the same. The outcome is you want to win the game. You want to do the best for, for the team that you're in. And once you're in the group, you feel it. Everyone believes in you. And this is go time.
Yeah. In terms of assimilating yourself in the team and bonding um, informally, who are you like your 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 buddies in the team that you're working and you know that you're going to you know start mucking around with them and stuff <laughs> like that? No, I told you already. It's a good group. Yeah. So many players that like. Anybody we chat? We connect well. I, I chat with most of the boys, you know. Yeah. Like obviously, Semenya is in um, England, so we chat quite a lot. Salisu is there. I saw Sinwana um, a couple of weeks back when we played them Southampton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like you're, you're seeing people Come all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, you're seeing people all the time, and whenever we we connect again, it's, it's always good vibes. So. What was it like when you when you came back from the World Cup in in the Brighton dressing room? Um, because now Brighton now has quite a few World Cup players. Yeah, yeah. What, what what did it do to Brighton? I think it just showed the quality that we had in the squad and how hard we all worked to to get to be in the positions. I think Alexis went and he won the World Cup with Argentina. Which was, I was going to ask you that. Like, yeah, it's a, yo, amazing amazing, fe amazing feeling. feeling. And obviously, he saw his medal. And you're great. You're 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 happy for him. Like I was honestly happy for him because you see how hard he works. You see what a good guy he is, and you think like, fair enough. Like well done, and you deserve it. And hopefully one day we can we can have the same feeling. Well, yeah, yeah. you're gonna have to win the World Cup. Go Ghana. No, it motivates you. It motivates you to to get to that level. And I think it's everybody's dream. You want to be playing on the highest stage and winning mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. the biggest Big of trophies. trophies. Yeah, having World Cup players in the squad. What did it do to the team? Coming into the you know after after December in January, did it galvanize the team to something like did it change anything? No, I think it was it was already set from the start of the season. Nothing changed. We we were we already knew the quality that we had in the group, mm. and we already know how good of a players that we had. You have to, like I said, you have to trust the coaching staff and believe in their methods. And once you you buy into it and you're you're working hard on the training kit pitch, the results will come out in itself on the on the match day. Mm. Beyond the Alexis that we all see on telly and all that. What's, what's it like in the dressing room? No, he's a great guy. He's a really great guy. Like he's, I can't speak highly enough of him. He's a good friend of mine and like a, a great player as you already know. So like I said, I was really happy for him. And to be honest, I was really happy for all the boys that played in the, the World Cup squad because you know how much of a big moment it is for everybody. And it's special to see people that you work day in, day out with the good days and the bad days. Yeah. and playing for the country on the biggest stage is uh, it's an amazing feeling. I mean, obviously, Chris Hutton and the Black Stars have their own target in terms of what they want to do. But for you, Tariq Lamte, what, what is your target realistically with the Black Stars, let's say, in the next five years? See, if I told you that, I'd be breaking my, my thing that I said to someone. That they, they asked me the same thing, and I, could, I, I couldn't tell them. So on that case, I can't tell you either. <laughs> but I just know that the targets are they're very high. They're very high. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a very ambitious person, and like, I always try to aim for, for a high target. Yeah. So hopefully it'll be great things ahead. I mean, that's for your ambition. It's it's obviously clear. You you were one of the star boys, you know, impending at Chelsea, and everybody knew that this guy was going straight to the top. But you had the opportunity to get more playing time, and you you took the opportunity at Brighton. It, should I first, if I should ask you, was it at the time a risk going to Brighton because Brighton is not Liverpool, it's not you know Arsenal, it's not Spurs, it's not literally at the time the top six club that it is right now was it a risk i think when you back yourself and you have the foundations that have behind me i have a great family i have a great friendship group that always believe in me and i trust in god so with that i don't think you can really think of anything as a, a risk i think it's something that you worked hard for you believe in yourself and you're ready to take the next step and that was playing week in week out in men's senior football if anything that you do you have to have trust and belief. You must be a prophet because choosing Brighton is, 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 I mean, it's probably the wildest, great thing that you could have done, looking at how it's all panned out. Um, I guess the question is, how does a team like Brighton, who have never, you know, played in the Premier League since it became the Premier League and have now gotten there, end up being a Europa League club? Like, how do you even begin to explain it? I think there's a lot of hard work that goes on behind the scenes. But for that one, you have to just call the chairman to ask him because me. <laughs> but, no, nah, seriously, like, it's a... No, it's a it's I'm a asking you club. because you have played at Chelsea, which is, I mean, obviously a world-class club, yeah. and Brighton, which is, you know, just, just coming up as well. So, even for, for you as a player, without being the chairman, yeah. how do you reckon they did it? How did you guys do it? I think the method that they use is very clear, like, they, they get young players in, develop from the academy or from elsewhere. Uh, they, they develop them, 
and then they give them a, a stage to, to perform at yeah. and to see the levels. I guess they trust in they trust in their systems, their methods, and to be honest, I think if you ask them, they'll tell you that maybe you didn't expect it to happen this quickly, but they were definitely aiming for for this maybe. Like you, I don't know, but there was always the goal to keep aiming top ten, then go higher, then go higher. I think you can never set a target too high, and obviously, if you achieve it, then it's, it's happy days. The day the Europa League participation and your position in the Europa League that you're going to play inside was confirmed. What was the dressing room like? We saw the video, but really? Yeah, it was unreal. It was amazing. It's like those are the moments in football that you, you cherish and you, you yeah, play for. Because at the end of the day, your fans are happy. You're happy. The person that you're in the whole season, like everything is coming to is materialised and you appreciate those moments because there's some tough times, but these are the, the great times forward to playing in Europe for next season. Speaking of great times, as a team, it's been fantastic, you know, things have gone well, we know how it is, some have gone to the World Cup and stuff, but for you, it's, it's not been easy, personally. Um, anything you want to tell us about how the, the, the down days were like, yeah, I think of injury? In football, the last few weeks, obviously, I've been, I've been out. In football, these things happen. Yeah. You can't dwell, I think I've learned now that you can't dwell on it too much. You, you have to assess the situation why it happened. And then once you do that, you just put all your energy into to getting back as strong as possible. And like I said, I have good people around me, so they, they keep me they keep me up, like upbeat, and I'm ready to to come back next season. Like I'm I'm working as hard as possible to put myself in the the best shape, and I think I'll I think I'll be good. You are managed by arguably the hottest coach in the Premier League, apart from the winner, Pep Guardiola, right now. What is Roberto De Zerbi like? I think it's football and the results speak for itself. Like yeah. he's a great coach. I think people have spoke about him tactically, how how good he is, and I think on the training pitch he gives you all the ideas and all the tools to to go out there and play your game, but to play it the way he wants you to play it. And you always have different options. So what we train is how we play. It's not like a oh, really yeah we we do everything. So it's, it's it's good for us and for me as a player. It's really good to to develop because I've had a few coaches now and. From each coach, I try to soak in as much information and as much, um, I'll say, knowledge as possible. Yeah. Because in the end, it makes you a better player. And if you know you can get to the top level, then you have no choice but to learn. And I'm, I'm really enjoying like, learning from every and every every different coach. Permit me to stay with the, you know, what what makes him different in terms of the other coaches that you've been in, in, a, in a, obviously in a positive way. How has he managed you? to bring out something else in your game that's different from the others? I think every co coach sees different qualities in you. Um, and like I said, tactically, he develops you, but also he knows your strengths and he gives you confidence to go out there and play your game and play to the best of your ability. Is that why he's used you as a right back, left back and sometimes on the wings? I mean, how do you manage to assimilate all of that, playing in different... I like it, to be honest. Me, anything that I can you do, do. Anything that I can, I can do to help the team, that's what I do. Like, in my youth days, I can play right back, left back, centre mid on the wings. So, like, it's not new to me. It's not new, it's yeah. It's not new. Like, I have the knowledge of that already. So, mm, like, so I think some of my goals this year have been on the left hand side. So, <laughs> I don't really mind. As long as, as long as I'm helping the team, I'm, I'm all good and it develops my game as well. So, it's okay. Mm. You might not have played too many games under the Zerbi, but what does he expect from his fullback? No, we're giving away secrets. Oh, come on, man. We see you playing. Like, what honest, yeah, I think he expects like, the modern fullback has to be up and down, high energy, and good technically with the ball. So I think those are just a few things that, that he expects from you and the stuff that you can do. So, yeah, you're, you're, in your comp, like, you're playing at the, the highest level and to the best of your ability. Have you started playing the Europa League anthem already? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't done that yet. I'm taking some time to, to rest for now and then... Oh, no. God willing, next year we will have a, a long journey in the competition. Yeah, it's going to be a long journey. So I was coming to that. Look, statistically, teams that have just come into the Premier League, having promoted and, you know, had a few great seasons, they are always, always at a disadvantage, especially if they qualify to Europe to go back into relegation. I'm sure you know that because you don't have the, the physical exertion of a long season. The Premier League is... It's, it's a marathon as it is. Adding Europa League football, um, the other comp the cup competitions and all that, it can take a toll. 
so obviously you're gonna you personally are gonna get games, but what do you think Brighton fans' expectations will be next season? With yeah, all this like load, it's, it's a new thing for us. We haven't played the, uh, the European League before and the Prem. So, but I think to be honest, we're always looking forward to. Uh, it's a tough and long schedule. So, if you want to get to that that level, then you have to start somewhere. And I think we're quite fine. I look at statistically, statistically what's happened because, like, we're a different team. So. I think you just have to look at what you have, prepare the way you prepare, and hopefully we, we should be fine. A lot more hotels, a lot more traveling to, you know, Europa League. You travel to all these exotic places, distances. Uh, yo, I, how are you psyching yourself for all that? Possibly, obviously, if, no. if injury, <laughs> you know, you recover and everything goes according yeah, to shipping. I'll be, I'll be fine. I'll be. I'm really looking, looking forward to it. Like I said, trips over Europe, playing in some of the biggest stadiums. And then come back to playing the Prem. Of course, it will be tough, and mentally, it could be a lot. But I think yeah. we're, re we're ready for it. To be honest, I think when you've worked hard to get somewhere, you don't try to let it go as easy. So I think we'll be fine. You reckon? Anyway, you don't. You don't believe? Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a stats person sometimes. So you look at the stats of, of teams that have just suddenly gone from the Championship a few seasons later. They are in Europe. It can, it can be a bit of a of a shake up. But I mean, Brighton have shown that you have fantastic managerial capabilities from the chairman right down to the coach and everything. And so, but yeah, um, I'll see it when I believe it. So, so, so no you problem. and Brighton have to give us your word that you are going to you are no going to have a good season. No, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We believe in ourselves. And and for the fans as well. Look. I was on a few Brighton forums before just to get a feel of what the fans think. Saw so some of the videos about when you qualified and everything, and it's like they, they can't believe what's going on. If you have something to tell the fans about, you know, this season, how it's gone, and what should they expect, what, what would you tell the fans? I'll say the fans have been amazing. Like throughout, throughout the, the journey that we've been on last season, this season, they've always stuck by us. Yeah. And I think this is it's more for them, the, uh, being able to to give them this is, is really special for us and like I said it's the first time in the club's history so we hope that yeah, they and we yeah um by a cruel twist of fate your former team Chelsea didn't have some great season I mean when you're watching their matches how do you feel seeing that they were struggling as much as they were no in football, we don't like to see anybody struggle yeah. like that's not whether you play for them you don't play for them I still have friends there I still have people that I know that so you'd like to see all your friends and your family members like, like doing well, yeah. and that's the truth of the matter. Like you don't see, like to see people, people struggling. That's not that's not how I am. So hopefully they can have a good season next year because they have some some really good players. Yeah, sure. Well, and 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 what's like any time you were playing Brighton versus Chelsea? I mean, I know you're a professional and all that, but did it give you any sentiment about going back to the bridge and all that? No, you're always grateful for the me being in the youth teams there. I've learned a lot there. Had some great coaches that have all added different bits of their coaching to my game, and maybe the player that I am today. Like I said, I have friends that are brothers for life there, so like it's not it's 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 always special to go back. But I'm at Brighton now, and I'm also very happy and really grateful to be there. So when you're when you're on the pitch, you want to win. It's as simple as that. So yeah, I enjoy going back, but I enjoy also playing for my team and getting the the results. Next five years, where do we see Tariq Lamptey dreams-wise? Dreams-wise, this is where. Uh, you I said that be, already. I I like this is the third time you're saying that. I want to be playing like week in, week out on, on the highest level, on the biggest stages. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Mm. Potential Champions League football somewhere in Europe, maybe, as well? We have to wait for God's plan, but God willing, we we'll get there. Yeah, and then, um, just as we started, with your, with your foundation as well, um, would love to see some of your mates, you know. Next time you should bring some of your mates from, from your team along. I'm sure they'll be more than happy to, to come. I think the time that we've done this one at is just a bit, obviously, difficult. Tight. The season has just finished. We only have a few days off. Along in the long term, for more and more people to come. I already have some friends that are with me this time, so, yeah, it should be good. Long term, I mean, Ghanaians love to see their own, you know, in the country. Long term, would you, would you consider doing I've been coming to Ghana maybe after, I mean, your career is a long way away. Yeah. But probably, you know, buying a house or something like that and settling here. Um, yeah, long of course, term. you love, it's an amazing country. And like you said, it's where you're from. 
and this time we're here to do the foundation work over the next couple of days and, and that's really important work for me. But while I'm here, I'm always catching up with family and, and friends, so like, I love being back here. Yeah, I know there's, there's four of you, um, siblings-wise. Three. I mean, you have three other siblings? Yeah, three, I'm Yes, so there's four of you in total. Um, some are footballers as well? Yeah, I have seen the brothers that are footballers. Okay, do we... Are we to expect any more Lamptees at the highest level in the Premier League? Can't be putting too much pressure on them. But <laughs> like I said, if they, if they enjoy the game and they grow up to be, they want to be footballers, then that's, that's their thing. But yeah. for now, we're just letting them play and enjoy, and enjoy the, football. the football. Okay, Tariq, thank you so much for no, uh, joining. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So, Tariq Lamte, Black Star, and hopefully, hopefully, uh, by the time his career ends, World Cup winner of Ghana.